Hello YouTube, my name is Pat McDonald, I own McDonald Timing, and today we're here to talk about our favorite meat management software, Meat Pro. So first of all, this is not a review of Meat Pro. Meat management software, there's lots of choices uh, out there. We have chosen Meat Pro and I'm really comfortable with it. We've been using it since it came out, I think over six years ago now. We were one of the first people who were testing it when it was still in beta. And we've been really fortunate to see the software grow to what it is right now. It's a very, very powerful, but very easy to use software package. I'm not here to say that you're wrong for not choosing Meat Pro or whatever. It's just for us, for our, our actual business and our needs, Meat Pro is fantastic for us. And so hoping to give you an idea of what Meat Pro is. If you're out there and you're like, well, geez, you know, I need to buy a meat management software. Hopefully this, this will help you in your decision making process. If you have any questions about Meat Pro, please feel free to leave them in the comments. Happy to help. As I said, we've been working with Meat Pro for years and years now. I know it like the back of my hand. And I've been able to train plenty of people with Meat Pro. So we're gonna start out by taking this older database and we are going to purge everything from it. No particular reason, but just didn't feel like making a new one. So now we have a database that's completely blanked and we're gonna import a semicolon delimited file from mile split. Now this was a meet that we actually did this past spring. I did some changes to it. I changed some of the team names, no big deal. I'm going to force metric and add missing events, and I'm going to ignore the competitor number as well. And we're going to import everything. And so now we have a list of events, and we have some work to do in order to clean them up. Uh, MePro defaults to you know a few few things that, of course, we're, we're going to want to change. You know, lanes for the lane races are fine, but um, we have random position assignments. And first of all, we're going to set everything to youth. Everything currently is going to be on adult, and we want it to be boys and girls rather than men and women. So the batch file operation is pretty powerful, and we have plenty of options here. We can set the, set the flight order, set the heat order, we can set all the field events to English, we can set everything to score or not, we can set all the position orders, and also we can move entries around from various events to other events. And we set everything to score. Now if we're actually doing this meet, I would do a little bit more work with the lane and position assignments. Um, pretty simple stuff, but you know, for the 800 and, and the mile, we'd set everything to waterfall. Uh, you know, you can do this all individually. It's pretty easy. And you see the tabs up, up top. This is really where you're gonna spend most of your time. You know, teams and athletes are basically the same. You can add a new team, add a new athlete using the green button. Relays work a little bit differently. You select the relay and then you can change this time. In order to add a relay, you just go ahead and double click on the team over on the right hand box. And then the seating menu. We're just gonna seat an event. Not gonna do any of the questions. Not gonna pick breakpoints or anything like that. We're just gonna let the program do what it was designed to do. And then it'll pop up, there we go. And we can just drag kids over if we want to. We can put that kid in there and it's good to go. Um, and then most of the time be spent over here. Uh, normally right in this little area would be the box for sessions. Obviously we don't have that because we didn't go and set that up. But you can see heat one and heat two. Um, and come through and enter results. And will we? And, uh, score it. One thing that's nice about Meat Pro is you can actually score an event without everybody actually having been given a result. Uh, there's high tech will will force an error if that's the case. 
Um, you can see we are good to go with our meet report and we can mark it as complete. And you know, so I can train somebody in about five minutes to do this. So going into FAT and in the interfaces, that's where you're gonna set up your link to finish links. We actually don't change this from, from meet to meet. So we, I don't have to come in and do a whole lot, maybe come in and, and make sure that the session is properly noted. Otherwise, publish to disk is something that we do. Uh, so I prefer to write it to a folder and send up individual files, especially if we're kind of out in the middle of nowhere, don't have a great, uh, you know, don't have great hotspot signal. Other things in interface, of course, field links, web app. Web app is for live field event scoring. We don't particularly do a lot with it. Um, upload to the web is interesting. That's using the Direct Athletics and TFERS Meet Pro server. And so you don't have to actually have your own website to upload to the web. I know a lot of companies that actually just have a, a face uh, on, on Facebook or Twitter and they don't have a website. S3 upload for Amazon um, you know, and FTP is kind of normal for your own website. And then you'll have two options in the scoreboard menu. Dactronics and Result TV. Dactronics uses a fixed digit system. Result TV, the module right now has a few quirks. It's uh, it, it's something I believe to do with opening and closing of the ports. So you set it up and it does work and it does run in the background just fine. But if you're doing a cross country race and you wanna display the individuals and or then go to the team scores, you often have to close the entire module out, which is a little bit of a hassle, uh, but I believe they are working on it. At least I, I hope they're working on it and should be better soon. Uh, live update, we've done this sometimes. So this, this has the potential to send results up to the web uh, or to Dactronics or Result TV or whatever you wanna do. Um, on you know, marking event complete. Um, had some issues with this in the last year, uh, but honestly, it's probably more likely my fault. Um, reports have every single report that you could possibly need or imagine. Of course, you know, pretty regularly we are using uh, the start list functionality, and then of course the score, score sheets for horizontal and vertical. Um, you know, but it's, it's in the MVP at the end of the meet, of course. Uh, not really doing a whole lot with the other stuff, but they are available to us, which is fantastic. Records module was just completely redone in the last uh, few months here. Uh, records are now updated uh, almost on the fly, so when they're ratified for some of the major ones. Labels, again, something we don't really do a whole lot of, uh, but we, we've done award labels before. They're there and they're available. Uh, DA and TFERS are directly located here. You know, so I mean, we for college meets log in, import the entries, upload the results at the end of the meet. It takes about two minutes. Uh, we're normally able to upload results by the time the last team is is actually driving away. Um, and then the multi-user, we've done multi-user. Probably cover that in a future video at some point in time. Uh, not always a thing that that we particularly use. And for some reason, this uh, there's the alternate way to get to the to the views. I mean, really, it's probably just as so that you know what the hotkeys are if you really wanted to. Um, release notes are, are here as well. Uh, so you know we've been they are very well taken care of as far as uh, you know what things are are happening and when. Um, you can see during the season there's an update about every every other week or so. Um, you know, sometimes it's it's to correct a bug. A lot of times it's actually to add functionality. Um, and that's one of the things I really appreciate about Meet Pro is that they've been very proactive when it comes to making sure that the program is, is updated and updating. So the strengths of the program to me, one is cost. I think it's $200 a year. Uh, there's an additional fee if you want to use multi-user mode. Uh, if you're a power user, it's worth it. Um, if you're doing more than one meet a year, it's it's worth it basically to me. Uh, the the ease of use and access of it is is so simple, it's fantastic, and that kind of leans into the the ease of use aspect of it. Um, you know, I can teach somebody in about five minutes to be 90% literate in the program. And what's more, if if something that 
does require that last 10% comes up, I can actually talk them through it. I don't have to be there with them. I can talk them through it on the phone or or if they're sitting next to me, I just say, all right, here's where you go. Let's do go here, 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 click this, and, and we're done. It's phenomenal. Reliability, uh, you know, we started using it when reliability was a little bit off and, you know, the architecture was completely redone with Mi Pro 2. It was completely reworked and it is phenomenal. Anybody that's used high tech for more than, than like a meet has seen that window with the, the error that comes up that says, you know, something, something error, totally irrational unless you're uh, deep in the, into the code. Abort, ignore, retry, doesn't matter what you hit, you're rebooting the program. That's not something that, that you deal with with Meet Pro at this point in time. Uh, you know, and I've done it with, with age group meets that have been, you know, where there's over a thousand people and, and uh, you know, there's technically, there's a, 180 events on the track or something insane. And it still is, is, you know, solid as a rock. And then the web tools, you know, I know a lot of road race companies actually don't have their own website anymore. They just use Twitter, they just use Facebook. They have a Facebook page and that's it. Uh, so if you don't want to, you know, have a website and you want to still do live results, they'll let you use the Meet Pro, you know, direct athletic servers. That's phenomenal. Um, but then giving you so many choices as it stands, it's, it's just so much, much easier uh, than than kind of just like, you know, the one one box and, and curry or new that, that you'll get with some of the other programs. Um, and then if you have any background in HTML, CSS, you can make the results look any way you would like them to. So I have these things pegged as, as weaknesses, and I guess technically you, you could say that. I'm not sure they're actually weaknesses. They're really just things that, that I would like to see come along. For one thing, record input, uh, it's a little bit tedious. If you're buying this or thinking about buying this and you're a high school coach and only doing a couple meets a year, record input's no big deal. If you're doing 40, 50 events a year, record input becomes a much, much bigger problem. I would love to be able to do some sort of Excel file or some sort of uh, semicolon delimited input, even if it was bad, even if I had to go in and like massage the, that data around in the records afterwards, I would still prefer it to being a uh, one shot you know, thing when, where, where it currently is right now. Uh, the interface, I, you know, I, I know I basically I said this, it was a strength just a moment ago. In reality, I am able to do a lot more with it. I would love to have like a power user mode where almost everything is on screen at the same time. Give me smaller text, give me dark mode and all sorts of stuff. Like it, just make it look like day trading software. That's fine with me. Um, logos, logos were added just a few months ago in 2019. For the colleges, if you download from Direct Athletics or Tifers, you'll get all the logos for colleges. Uh, I, I, I want to see a, a specific way that we can get high school logos in. I do a lot of high school events. I do mostly the same teams as well. So I, I'd really like to find a way to, to bring that along. Uh, I have contacted them about it and I'm hopeful that we can get something kind of worked out, some sort of uh, you know specific path forward in the, in the near future. The result TV interface, as I said, needs to be reworked. It's just a little bit wonky right now. It has a few quirks and I'm confident that it, it's something that can be handled. And um, and then finally, you know, if you're, again, if you're a contractor, you're doing a lot of meets, you know, sometimes you'll be at one meet and have to uh, change over to a different database, work that database for a little while, and then, you know, go back and forth. I, I would like to see some of those settings be specific to the meet file rather than to the program. And uh, I know that that's kind of tricky here and there, but uh, and some of the things I want them to be uh, to, to be sticky. I want the uh, FAT, you know, finish links uh, meet file to be at the same location for, for every meet I do. But some of these things are it's just a little bit annoying if you are a contractor doing contract level work like me. Just one last thing real quick. We use every single meet registration site available to us. We use Milesplit, we use Direct Athletics, we use Coach O, we use Athletic.net, we use even use some custom systems. They're all fine. I, I don't care either way. But at the end of the meet, we got to get results back up into that system. And if you're using Milesplit and you're not using either Race Tab or High Tech, your results are not going to go up natively because their system thinks that 32-10 is 32 feet 10 inches. It's not. It's not annotated properly. 32-10 is nothing. 
So if you're from Milesplit and you're watching this, you're like, oh, they actually, this, some of this makes sense. 32-10 maybe is fine in your world. 32 prime, 10 double prime is the proper way to display 32 feet, 10 inches. And you won't let me. I have plenty of different ways I can export a file of results. Please let, let me know what you want. I'll, I'll give it to you. But give me a native way that I can export results from me pro directly into Milesplit so that the kids I'm timing, their, their marks get uploaded to their, to their profile page right away. Please, I'm begging you. So that's just a very basic look at me pro. If you have any questions, feel free to leave it in the comments. Down below too, you'll find a link to the community that was set up by the Meet Pro people. Uh, it's, it's brand new, it's a couple of months old, but it is getting going. It does require a login though, so keep that in mind. If this video hit you in the right way, give us a like, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you next time. Thanks guys.